we're ready for our second speech. So this time we have Bjarne from Denmark. He's a web developer with a passion for sustainable, respectful, and inclusive internet. So let's give a big applause for Bjarne. And let's go with it. Yeah, um, thank you so much for this uh, turnout. It's uh, quite amazing to see. I'm very thrilled that uh, so many chose to uh, come here today and learn a little bit about sustainable web development. Let me try if this clicker works. Um, no. Let me try the other one. Backup plan. No. Laser pointer works. Over here. Back, forward. I'm sorry. <laughs> we will get this sorted. While we get this sorted, um, let me freestyle <laughs> a little then. So um, a couple of years ago, back in 2021, uh, I was on a, on a canoe trip with my friend Lars, and uh, we were discussing the injustice in, in inaccessible uh, internet, and we were discussing climate change, which worried uh, both of us quite a bit and we were wondering if there was anything we could do uh, in our area of uh, work to uh, help out with, with that. Yeah. And one good thing that came from the pandemic was the ability to attend in meetups all over the world. And uh, I attended to some meetups in, thank you, in um, Bristol, <laughs> I think, and learned about the topic uh, 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 sustainability and, uh, and digital and internet. And I was quite surprised to learn how big an impact the internet, all the data centers, have on uh, the environment. Oh, let me just go back a second. Um, there's a great, great article uh, in the link uh, on the slides on the Web Almanac Chapter 20 on sustainability with a lot of studies uh, backing up the claims that the internet has a um, carbon footprint. Uh, yeah. So go check that out. And I will use some screenshots here in this presentation that aren't that readable on the uh, Beamer here. I'm sorry about that. But if you go into the uh, talk on uh, the website, the WCEU website, the talk called Practical Techniques for Sustainable Web Development <laughs> with WordPress, uh, the session slides have already been uploaded, so you can follow along there if you have a hard time reading the numbers up here. Uh, one not that great thing that came with the pandemic was, um, at least in Denmark, the requirement to get either tested and have a valid test result on your phone or a... Um, what is it? And a vaccine, the shot, when that arrived. And I talked to one of my friends who is blind, and he told me that the governmental website where you have to uh, book a test wasn't accessible. And imagine that you are blind, you're already told to keep a distance outside amongst your peers, which is hard and you cannot see, and you know you are required to, um, to be tested, and you are required to use the governmental website for that, and it's inaccessible. 
That's not okay. A few years later, the situation wasn't that much better. Around 20% of the Danish websites are accessible and the rest um, are failing. So, as I was talking to my friend uh, Lars at this canoe trip, this is a older image from before, um, I mean, <laughs> the wind at the Tustrup Sø uh, spoiled our canoe trip when the sun was still shining. And I, told, I asked him, well, don't you think that we can do better, a lot better? And uh, he said, yes, you probably could. This could probably be a business. And I was, hmm, maybe, maybe not. But um, a month later, he, started, uh, he had started a business and asked me to, to join him. And that was the beginning of the Sustainable Web DK business. And we have been in business for three years now. We needed some, some guidelines, some <coughs> principles to, to work upon. And as it mostly is, we, what our idea wasn't that original. There's a sustainable web manifesto.com where more than 3,000 developers have signed up and committed themselves to create a sustainable internet that is clean, efficient, open, honest, regenerative, and resilient. These are words that can be hard to grasp. It's a bit fluffy. So I'm going to tell you what it means to us in our company. We try to develop green. What does that mean? We try to use the hardware we have, we already have, the furniture for, the, for our offices that we already have. Um, when we visit clients, we try to use public transportation when it's possible. We host our websites green on uh, data centers that are powered by renewable energy. So that's the clean development part. We try to make websites that are efficient, that emits less than 0.25 gram of CO2 equivalents per page view. We try to make uh, our websites open. They are all accessible by default. Um, we try to take care of people's privacy and information. We use uh, the WordPress privacy tools and plugins that support these tools. Being honest, we don't track people. We don't use cookie pop-ups or cookies. We don't implement any deceptive patterns. And we try to build websites that support and or amplify a sustainable way of working or living. So no, airline websites, but a website that helps you recycle your trash, maybe. And being resilient, we try to test our websites in real-world environment at the end user, in the end user's environment, being that out on the countryside where the mobile coverage is bad and the sun is shining on their phone or in public transportation where the connection is not ideal. Um, I have two slides on this Sustainable Web Manifesto, and that's not a coincidence, because I think these are some amazing principles to work upon. And every time a question comes up from a client, can we have this feature, or can I have that feature? We look on these six principles and see if it conflicts with any of these. And maybe we have to say no, and it's not a problem, because we agreed on that before we signed the contract. Um, I'm into recycling, and that is also the reason I felt the urge to mention this 
talk from last year by Louise Towler on digital sustainability, the benefits for business and the environment. Um, it's much appreciated. There's a much more legislation and numbers and studies behind this topic. And um, Louise does a great job explaining that. So go into WordPress TV, not now, later maybe, and search for sustainability. And there are several talks. This is the most recent one. Great resources now. <clears throat> OK. So have anyone seen this uh, screenshot, or not this particular screenshot, but this website called Website Carbon, with the blue raging anyone? Yeah, OK, cool. So. There we can put in the URL of our website and get an estimation on how, how much energy it uses and uh, how much carbon emission it, um, it results in. These estimations are built on several factors, metrics, some, something we can measure. I mean, the page weight, the page size in kilobytes, we can measure um, the carbon intensity of the country that the data center is located in. And some, some things we have to assume, like how many users are visiting this website on their phone, on their desktop. Are they connected to a Wi-Fi network or are they using a mobile network? These are estimations. And what if these estimations are wrong? I won't go too much into that because there's a great article on the sustainablewebdesign.org website where you can look into that. But the main conclusion for now is that we have the opportunity to do something now, even if our calculations are not 100% perfect. So we started to rebuild websites mostly. These are clients that comes to us, say we have this old website, we would like a new one in WordPress. And this is an example. The screenshot to the left is the old website. It features all the regular stuff you know on a website, a logo, a navigation menu, a slider. It's a website from 2000 and seven or something like that. Like that is pretty old, the old website. So it has a slider. Um, social, image, no, social media links and um, what have we got here? Six blog posts or articles with this read more button, which was how you did it back then, and a footer. Nothing in particular. So we built a new site for DTHS. Um, and it has most of the same features. Uh, now there's a search function. That's nice. We replaced the slider um, with a gradient and a not that visible blurred background image, very lean. Instead of six articles with a read more button, we have now 12 articles with a featured image to like make it look a little bit modern and engaging, and a footer that's not visible on the screenshot. So you might think that the new website is heavier than the old website as it contains more images. But actually, it's 88% leaner. Where the old website were estimated to emit 0.55 gram of CO2 per page view, a new website was estimated to emit 0 0.06 grams of CO2 per page view. So that's just to say that a more modern or feature complete website does not have to be more polluting. In fact, the opposite might as well be the case.
During the last three years, we have rebuilt several websites, and the average carbon footprint reduction is an average 89%. Which industry wouldn't pursue these numbers and try to reduce the carbon emissions by 89%, if possible, without any, I mean, loss of functionality? Imagine if your electric car could drive four times the range on the same energy. Of course, you would look into that. Um, besides making our websites leaner and more efficient, we also moved our hosting to a data center that is hosted by renewable energy. You can find such a host on the Green Web Foundation .org. Um, and you can enter your URL to um, on this website and see if your data center, your host, is registered as a host being powered by renewables. If it doesn't uh, show up here, it doesn't mean necessarily that your host isn't powered by renewables, but this is the information we've got. Mm. Because not all energy is created equal, this is a screenshot from Electricity Maps, a very interesting site where you can see how the energy mix is in your country uh, at any given time. This is a screenshot from February, the entire month. And it's hard to see, so I will just try to go over it. But it says that the average, the carbon intensity of one kilowatt hour in Denmark was 404 grams of CO2. Meaning that every time we use one kilowatt power on our data center, 404 grams of CO2 are being emitted. Uh, emitted. Um, the, the rate of renewable energy is around 55% because we have uh, some wind power, a little bit of solar power. Of course, that's not a lot in Denmark in February. We burn a lot of coal and we burn a lot of uh, wood, which is called biomass, which we import. And we burn a lot of gas. So even though we in Denmark praise ourselves that we are front runners in uh, ecological and climate stuff. Um, we do want to keep warm in the winter and we burn a lot of stuff to that. So at the same time in February, the carbon intensity in Sweden was around 25 grams of CO2 per kilowatt hour. They also have wind power. They also had hydro power like water flowing down the mountains, which you can utilize to create energy. We don't have any mountains in Denmark, so that's not an option. And then they have nuclear power, and make of it what you want, but it doesn't emit a lot of carbon, supposedly. So we chose a hosting company in Sweden, trying to use and support a hosting company that is uh, powered by renewables. <coughs> Okay, the nitty-gritty part we come to now. So when you want to reduce the size of your website, one of the metrics that we can use in this calculation in how much carbon is emitted on our website, when we try to reduce the size, where do we start? And there's a website called digitalbeacon.co where you can enter your URL and get this breakdown how much, how much uh, of uh, kilobytes are your images causing? Um, what is your size of all your scripts and your style sheets and your fonts? And maybe I forgot to mention that, but, but let me just rewind. When we sign a contract with a client, we agree on a maximum carbon emission per page view. And it's mostly around 
0.25 gram of CO2 per page view. So let's say on this side, in this screenshot here, um, we are emitting around 0.2 gram of CO2 per page view, so that's fine. But let's say we want to add another six images. We would probably break that budget. That gives us a tool to decide or have a discussion with our client. Can we, can we use system funds instead? Or is nine images enough? Digital Beacon is a great tool to facilitate that discussion, I think. Um, the worst of the four worst offenders I found find on the website I, um, I rebuilt are images. They are huge. They are videos, they are fonts, and PDF files. There's also scripts and CSS, etc. But that will take too long. So when it comes to images, I suggest you try and locate the worst offenders, the biggest images on the website. And then you experiment with the formats and the quality of these images. Use responsive images. That is built into WordPress now since five point something. So nothing to worry about there. And lazy loading probably also uh, enabled by your WordPress theme. And once you have found the right compression radio for your images, automate that process using a plugin. The tools I use in these examples that I will show you now is scrooge.app, a website where you can upload an image and play around with compression radios, and the eww image optimizer plugin that automates compression. So, sorry. Um, now it gets a bit technical. How many in here are um, familiar with the inspect tool in your browser? Oh, that's most of you. Great. So, what I do when a client approaches me or anyone approaches me, you can come up to me afterwards if you want. Say, what can I do on my website? How can I prove my website? This sounds interesting. There seems to be a lot to be gained here. What can I do? So open your inspect tool. Choose the network tab. Um, throttle, try and throttle the connection, the bandwidth to a, a tree key connection. Um, the inspect tool will list all the assets that is loaded on the page. Sort them by size with the highest, the largest file at the top. In this example, this is from a university in Denmark. We have one image. It's the one up here in the hero section with an entrance and some students walking out. This is a PNG file at 1.8 megabyte. The total size of this page is 5.2 megabytes transferred, um, 7.3 megabytes uncompressed. And the download time in total on a mobile phone is around 30 seconds. Who has 30 seconds to wait for a single page to load? So I download this uh, image the hero image, and I upload it to Squoosh, where I can play around. It's not possible in the slide, of course, but there's this slider, and I suggest you start playing around with it. And you can see the before and after results. Once you have um, tried different quality settings, and what we did here is that instead of a PNG format, we chose the JPEG format and the quality of 70. That alone reduced that image size by 89%. So now it's only 130, 90, 193 kilobytes. That's a huge reduction. Because PNGs are not that great for photography. You probably know that already. 
But there's more, as phones don't have desktop monitor uh, resolutions, or mostly don't have. So what this emulated phone reports is that the width of the display is 375 pixels wide. And then there's something called, let me just, I remember, a device pixel ratio hides the fact that um, it's actually 750 pixels wide. So obviously it doesn't make sense to serve an image that is 2000 pixels wide when you only use 700 uh, of these pixels in the vertical direction. So if we further reduce the size, we scale the image size down to a size that is appropriate for, for phones, we will have a reduction of 98%. And the image file is now only 45 kilobytes wide. Um, that is just one image. I mean, compressing that one image reduced the page size of that page by around 25%. So there's a lot to be gained with a minimum of effort. So to recap on images, use your preferred plugin for uh, image compression. You can and should compress images before upload, but WordPress generates these thumbnails called large, medium, large, medium, and thumbnail, I think, and your theme might uh, create other versions of that image as well. And these images aren't that greatly compressed. Um, that's quite weird, actually. But if I upload a, I mean, thoroughly compressed image to my WordPress installation, I will have a large version that is actually, by dimension, smaller than my full version image, but it, it might be, it might have a larger file size. An image compression plugin will take care of that. Um, use the one that suits your needs. Set the lowest accept acceptable quality. Experiment with the quality in Scrooge. Start with like 10 and move your way up until you like have to squint your eyes to see any difference. That is your quality. Enable the P compression. So the P is more efficient than PNGs and JPEGs. And your plugin will probably be able to create these versions of the images for you and serve them to the devices that support the P. And remember your budget. It's very easy to be mm, lured into just adding more content to the page. But remember your budget. Videos. Those, this, these are the second worst offenders I meet on websites that are inefficient. Um, how many of you have uh, wanted to have videos in the hero section as a background video or had clients that wanted videos in the hero section also playing? Yeah, it's quite a common thing. Well, it's bad for several reasons, accessibility being one of them. And it's also, I mean, do we linger on the hero section to, wa to watch that video in slow-mo without audio? What, do we really need that? Or if we need videos, should it be a proper video with audio and subtitles that we can play on demand? What I see is that our clients have a production company to shoot a great, beautiful video for them, and they spend a lot of money on that. And of course, they want to embed that on the website. In many cases, it does not have to be a 4K quality video with surround sound that is mostly being consumed on your phone anyway. So my 
advice to you is try to get the message that the video attempts to get across in standard definition, no 4K, no high definition. Find the right bitrate for your video compression. Don't, do not skimp on audio. Audio is important if it's there. Um, and help your clients compress this video. Many clients don't have a clue that video compression is a thing. I'm now going to show you <clears throat> and have a little break. A video um, we uploaded for a client. I had uh, some issues with Google Slides and video trying to Google Slides trying to compress or resize my video to 360p. So this is a screencast of me playing a video. It's a bit odd, but let's try it. I'm searching for the Danish word of cardboard and locating the video on the page, enabling captions. That is for you. Min navn er Mogens Tude, og jeg er driftschef her på AFLD. Hvor vi, det er et modtageranlæg, hvor vi modtager mange forskellige typer øh, affald til genanvendelse. Når vi modtager pap og papir fra borgerne, så sorterer vi den del af papiret ud i gemenen og sorterer ud. Papirdelen går til produktion for eksempel af æggebakker, mens resten, og det er pap og noget papir, der er blandet sammen, det går til produktion af for eksempel det rør, der er inde i en gulvtæppe for eksempel, eller det rør, der er inde i en toiletrulle, eller det rør, der er inde i en køkkenrulle. At vores opfordring til borgerne er, at man fortsætter med den gode affaldssortering i hjemmene. These are the settings I used to compress this video. These are hard to see on the projector screen here, so I will go over them quickly and you can watch them in the slides. Uh, in your own time. But it's not a lot, really. Um, I have used an uh, application called Handbrake. I chose that my <clears throat> compressed version of this video should be web optimized, um, ordering the data in a way that it's um, appropriate for streaming. And then I scale the video size down to the width of my content in the blog editor, the standard width of the content in the blog editor. In this case, 768 pixels wide. Assuming that most people would just play the video in line, if at all. Uh, make sure to uh, keep the aspect ratio of 16 times 9. And here the interesting part comes. So the average bit rate of this video is 700 kilobits per second. The original video had around 20 megabyte data per, per, per second, and, and that's way too much. So by experimenting with different settings in here, I found that an appropriate setting was around 700 kilobytes for the average speed rate, the quality. The frame rate stays, it's the same, Normally, there isn't any reason to change the frame, frame rate. And um, for the audio, as I said, don't skimp on audio quality, but 360 uh, kilobits for moans talking about how to recycle cardboard, that's not necessary. 96 kilobytes stereo mixed down is just fine. Um, in this, on this side, on this particular side, I mean, the client has a new made, video made maybe twice or three times a year. So they cannot remember all these settings. So I compress the video for them. And I'm using a custom post type here um, for the video so I can add them to the site. And in the note field, the label, uh, the help text, for this field, this is the MP4 file, and I have my subtitles and the poster image or the featured image. 
in these note fields, I write down the compression ratio that is suitable for these types of uh, videos, allowing me to remember the optimal settings so I don't have to do that work again, or whoever is going to compress and upload videos to the site. So once the video has been uploaded to this custom post type, the client can just pick the video in a dropdown and they don't have to worry about all the technical details because they won't. If they don't get this sort of help, they will just upload their original video on their site and they will watch it on the local area network and think, this is fine, it works great. Oh, I'm done? Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay, compress your video. This particular video went down from 50 megabytes to five megabytes. <coughs> compress your fonts, watch the slides, or get up to me afterwards if you need more details. I've been too slow. Um, yeah, don't upload every font that is available in the zip file from Google. Use the one, upload <coughs> the ones you need. Or use system fonts and PDF files. They as well can mostly be compressed at around 75% with no visible loss in quality. Final slide, I'm sorry. The resource portal is a trash sorting guide. It is estimated to have around 800,000 page views on impressions annually. By using these methods, we brought the carbon emissions down from 1,600 kilograms to around 80 kilograms per year. Now imagine if you go home and apply some of these techniques to your own sites and spread the word that we can make more efficient, accessible and uh, greener websites with not that much effort on a WordPress scale that would have a huge impact. So please Dive more into this and get in touch afterwards if this has caught your interest. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Okay, so we're moving to the Q&A part. So if you have any question, raise your hand and you'll see um, the two guys with the gray t-shirts to give you the mic. So if you want to go ahead. Please go ahead. First of all, thank you for the great talk. It was really interesting. Uh, I have a question. What's your opinion on the big service providers such, such as Cloudflare nowadays, who do also a lot of compression automatically when you push your site? They automatically generate uh, WebP files from your JPEG files just to put stuff down also on the CDN level. So what's your opinion on the green side of using those services? nowadays than just using your own website and optimize it. Yeah, um, is this still open? Yeah, okay. I think it depends on where uh, the major part of your visitors are located. Say the Danish resource sorting guide is only used by uh, six municipalities in Denmark. I mean, it wouldn't make a lot of sense to have that size, well, well, sorry, that site um, cloned to constant delivery networks in Shanghai and Texas. Um, that's just extra traffic, right? So, but if you have a global site, I suppose that using a constant delivery network uh, would make um, would make sense. Does that answer your question? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, thank you. Hello, thank you for your talk. I will start at the same time as you, and, and I didn't know the manifesto, so thank you. Uh, I will add a new thing to the manifesto. As you know, on the 4% of footprint of the digital, two-thirds is the manufacturing. Your phone, your tablet, your laptop, your screen, and so on. And sometimes you may optimize the energy, but you can get your website incompatible with all phone, all tablet. 
So sometimes you need to get fallbacks to WebP, to Avif, to JPEG Excel to make sure we, your website is still accessible to all the tablet because it can be from poor people or rich people. It depends on your digital uh, awareness, in fact. So if you could add this accessibility, it would be, would be great. Um, yeah, great. For, uh, thank you for that feedback. That's absolutely true. Um, some older uh, Apple devices don't support WebP, and they cannot be upgraded. Talk with Apple about that. Um, so in these cases, we have to serve the older legacy formats like PNG and, and JPEG, and um, and a plugin that uh, creates WebP images alternatives uh, will take care of that and serve the WebP file only to the <clears throat> browser agents that supports and can display WebP images. And in case you come with an iOS 12 iPad, you will be served the JPEG or the PNG file. So there will be some backwards compatibility there. Thank you. No problem. Good morning. Um, you mentioned that uh, tracking shouldn't be done too much. Um, what solution do you have to measure performance? Because a lot of clients are paying advertising money and stuff to, to towards their website. But if you don't use the right tracking tools, you cannot measure that performance. Um, do you have any ideas for that? Um, yeah, as so we do. We do have statistics. We just use, don't use Google Analytics, and we don't use Facebook Pixels, for instance. Um, I mean, the benefits of being able to avoid cookies um, outweighs the, the benefits of being able to track individual person's activity on the internet. So we still get statistics on how many visitors do we have, uh, what pages are they looking up and are they using a phone or a desktop or whatever? Which country do they come from? But we don't track any individual uh, information that we will need to take care of. So you use server-side tracking? Sorry? You, you're using server-side tracking for that? Uh, yeah, sometimes. And uh, we also use a, a service called Plausible. It's a, a a different cookie-less, cookie-free tracking, uh, not tracking, statistics service, or there are uh, several plugins for WordPress that gives you, I mean, the basic information you need, like how many visitors, where do they come from, are my sites being seen, um, these kind of questions have proven to our clients to be enough in our experience. And th therefore, we can avoid the cookies entirely and the cookie pop-ups, who nobody loves. OK, thank you. There's nobody left. Yeah. <clears throat> Hi, thank you for a, a great talk and for, for bringing sustainability right into the mainstream of the WordCamp. It's really what we need. Um, in terms of the, you, you seem to be getting really amazing results with your rebuilds, mm. your 89% your, uh, as an average. Do you think, or have you consciously picked sites which had a lot of room for improvement? Or do you think that in general, these sort of results, this sort of change could be made across most sites yeah. that we might work on? I mean, I didn't pick, I didn't cherry pick bad sites to demonstrate for you here, these are the results that I see across the board. And that is why I thought it was important to come down here and tell you about it. Um, I didn't mention that when we don't rebuild sites, when we just optimize existing sites, I have had um, people coming to me, what can I do? And I explain it to them and they go home and they achieve around 50 to 70% of reduction by themselves in an hour's work. So, I mean, the worst example you saw here, the original site, that one that I achieved 95% reduction on, I built that original site. 
<laughs> I built that original site, and I don't want to mention it, but it was in a page builder that wasn't that effective. So, old site. Is, is, there, is there a subtle message here that be careful using page builders? No, and I mean, oh, okay. they've gotten a lot more efficient over the, the years. Um, but there was a time period where every widget or element that you can, could load on a page were the code for that were loaded on each page, even though you didn't use it. So that wasn't that effective. Um, some page builders <clears throat> didn't allow you to upload fonts in WAF2 format, but you have to use the true, true type format. That isn't very effective. So no, in general, I don't, I wouldn't advise against using page builders if yeah. that is your but, thing. But if there's an old page being used, that there could be good opportunities to improve. Sorry? If, if an older version of a page builder has been used to build a site, Definitely. it's likely there's good and opportunities for the improvement. The blog editor, Gutenberg blog editor, has matured that much. I use that solely and have been for four years now. So it's, I mean, I can do everything I want in the blog editor. So, and it's very efficient. Yeah. Thank you very much. No problem. Okay, any other questions? Perfect. Hi, thank you for your uh, talk, um, for putting this subject in such a practical way. I'm curious about the CO2 budget. Uh, and I have a question about if you work with clients that are already commit with sustainability, or you work for, uh, with clients that are not committed and you have to somehow convince them to design the websites in this CO2 budget well i you are asking if it is difficult to convince the client to adhere to a budget or yeah yeah i'm i'm asking if you uh, yeah if it is difficult and if you the client you are working with they all already are committed with sustainability they want to uh, make their website in a sustainable way or you are able to convince non-committed people to do this, or how do you do it? Yeah. Um, first of all, I put the conditions into my quote or my offer of front and center. So I say, this, this is how we develop websites, and, and this is what you sign up for. Second, um, <clears throat> It's not that hard to make a mock-up of a, you know, the before after website. And I show them, this is your current carbon emissions of your existing website. And this is what you can achieve. And then I show you, I show them the core web vitals uh, because they are through the roof, 100% all the time. And that they understand. I mean, even if they, the idea of websites having a carbon footprint is abstract to them. Being, having a great SEO score or a great performance score, a great accessibility score, that resonates with them every time. So I have never experienced it to be a problem, uh, really. Okay, thank you. No problem. Okay, any other question? Okay, go ahead. Hello. Hello, I'm here. <laughs> um, Hi. You, you spent quite some time talking about optimizing uh, images and videos. Yeah. Um, I was wondering um, what your thoughts about using AIs for generating images and videos, um, because as far as my understanding is, this is very, very, very carbon heavy. Um, yeah. Um well, <laughs> I use AI for translating a text. Uh, that is a great help. Uh, I have artists in my family, so we don't, I mean, we don't cheer on AI taking that job out of our hands, really. Um, I mean, is it necessary? Or can we, can we use real humans photography? I would prefer that, but that's just as a feeling, really. And do you have like, because I've, I've had this more like anecdotal stories. Did you um, look at that and how, how bad is it actually? Like, 
Um, is it really as bad as I've heard, carbon-wise? Um, it's an in interesting question, and I'd, I'd love to have that uh, conversation, if we could um, catch up, maybe. Cool. Sure. <clears throat> There's a link on this slide, Altrop Deco, that's my personal blog. There are uh, contact information in the footer. Please, please get in touch. Okay, any other question? No? We're good? Okay, so we're moving on a 15 minute. Ah, we have one more question before we go to break. Uh, thank you very much for your excellent talk, uh, Bjorn. Uh, just to mention, because uh, a lot of people here are interested in the topic of sustainability, there is a sustainability team within WordPress. So if you want uh, to join, yeah. There are Nora's there as well. Um, a few people joining our weekly or bi-weekly meetings on Slack. We have a Slack channel, so if you're interested, please join. Uh, there are a lot of uh, things going on, a lot of discussions, things and ideas we share and uh, willing to make uh, uh, WordPress leading on sustainability. So please join our forces. Thank you.